right. Hi, and welcome to the show. Um, this is Scott Talks, and we're talking with Len Forney. We've got a, an amazingly um, honest, and uh, I, I don't even know how to describe the interview. These interviews always kind of throw me for a loop. Um, because you're uh, impacted, hon. I'm impacted, and you know, I'm a father of a couple. Of, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm really fond of women, and um, he he really is. Yeah, I mean, but... I have a whole house. <laughs> Most I mean, of the houses not in I've that way, live. but right. no, no, but I have two daughters. I mean, my house is like, we have girl dogs. We've had, you know, yes. like everybody. It's me I'm and my mom and your daughters. Yeah. And, yeah. I'm just, I'm just a great appreciator. And I think violence, <laughs> indiscriminate violence on women is just, it's unexplainable to me. I, I, I have not yet heard an explanation that, um, that I even understand. So I think the conversation mm-hmm. can be difficult. Um, and I think that, you know, uh, we'll just kind of. Uh, give you a little background. Lynn was attacked in 1999 as she slept in her bed. You were how old when this happened? You were I was 21. 21 years old at your mom's house. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Laura talked about something that is like at night when we go to bed and we um, all of us as humans when we lock the doors and we set the alarms and we we can't imagine that anything or we hear that sound in the middle of the night and oh it must have been something or another right but you woke up to a stranger sitting beside your bed trying to calm you down um you when your reaction was uh in fear and in defense of yourself he began to attack you and stabbed you seven times Mm -hmm. um uh got away um and then even I, i i don't think i was even you know, familiar with this whole, the whole victim shaming thing that you went through later. Mm-hmm. Uh, this was in, in, in Boca Raton, Florida, this occurred, which you don't yes. live in it anymore. Um, and I think for me, or maybe even other people, I think living with an unresolved issue, like, I think we all have a great sense of justice and in, in, within mm-hmm. us. And we want to, we want to know why things happen. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I did notice this happened in 1999. Your book came out um, called Choosing Survival in 2022. So mm-hmm. obviously, there was a great deal of processing for you to yeah. get to the place where you wanted uh, to write about this event. Um, but I want to maybe just ask you a little bit about how it, it is living with an un- unresolved uh, trauma, um, a violent act, um, and what that process might being where you are now and looking back at it as a process, like how would you describe the journey? Gosh, um, long. Yeah. <laughs> uh, obviously very difficult. Um, I think early on I was just trying to continue on. Like I went back to school that fall, which now that I look back, I'm like, Oh my God, like this happened in May and I went back to school and all right. like, you're like crazy. Just pretend um, like it didn't happen. Maybe I was just so determined to live my life and I'm mm-hmm. so determined this wasn't going to, you know, derail me. I was mm-hmm. like, I'm not going to let this man do that, you know, do that to me. Um, you know, that being said, I had many, many difficult times, especially that first year. Um, I would be so fearful sometimes getting home. If like I had some roommates, that I didn't know that well. And one time she left the back door open and I'm not, my heart was about to just explode out of my chest. And I was just stuck to the walls, like trying to get up the, you know, to make sure no one was in the house. I mean, I was terrified. And you probably and so, like, didn't, were, you probably didn't want your friends and the people that were close to you at the time to know that you were so affected. You wanted it to be like, I'm okay, but you yeah, weren't. <laughs> right. And I've always been that person, like, I'm fine, I'm fine. You uh-huh. know, and like, um, so I've always kind of done that. And, um, but yeah, it's like, cause it makes you feel weak or I'm not being strong or I have to, you know, pursue and carry on. And, um, but also I think there's this great power and strength and vulnerability and asking for help. And, and, you know, there was one time I was in the sound booth and I was running sound because I couldn't dance because I had this brace on my leg for a year while my nerve healed essentially. Mm-hmm. And they, I just broke down and sobbed and like all of my friends, I mean, it still makes me emotional thinking they came up and just like, and, you know, came around me and like hugged me. And it was just such a beautiful moment that just made me feel so loved and they didn't have to say anything. It was just the fact that they were there and they were willing to just love on me mm. and nothing had to be said. Um, that's probably one of the most beautiful memories I have. Um, but I always knew too, like I would have these experiences where like if my husband came home, I would jump like, and I right. knew it was him, you know? So there's just these little cues that I definitely was living in fear kind of all the time. And I think I got to a place where I'm like, I just want, I don't want to be 88 years old with the same issues. Right? With a shotgun and, at the um, door every time it rang. <laughs> like, okay, right, right. who is it? And feeling right. Exactly. And um, 
So I sought out a trauma therapist, like knowing it was going to be a lot of work, but I also just made this very conscious decision that I'm going to say whatever I need to say. And I'm going to be, you know, brutally honest because me saying like, I'm fine is not Mm -hmm. helping. It's not doing anything. Was that kind of like a surrender for you? Did you have to give up on that sort of fight to, to, to be normal and accept like I, I, something unusual has happened to me that I have to cope with that other people don't have to look at? It wasn't a surrender. I think it was just uh, even more of a way to be strong. Mm -hmm. You know, to me, it was just another addition to this strength that I feel like I do have. Um, But also it's like a decision and a choice. So, you know, that's kind of why I called my book what I did. It was it's a choice that we all make that I mean, I made that decision very consciously to explore and to keep digging and to keep healing. And it's it's a forever process. I don't know that it's ever going to be done. Right. Um, but it's one that I was willing to take. And it, that to me is always a sign of strength. It, it's, I, I think the way that you talked about it and so clearly and your memory of it uh, reflected um, a great, it, it seemed to reflect a great deal of work and a great deal of um, acceptance of, of who you are and what your, your journey was. Now you mentioned this guy, um, we, we, he never, he was never convicted of your crime, the crime Correct. that occurred to you, but um, it was assumed that he had, uh, once he was picked up, all the crimes in the area stopped. There were a series of women who had been attacked. One had actually, uh, they were, they found dead. Um, mm-hmm. um, do you, do you uh, communicate with these women? Do, do you have any friends from that group? Are you guys a part of No, I've always thought about that. Like, what would it be like to meet someone else? And I have this um, kind of fantasy that somehow someone would find my book and connect us. I don't know why I'm getting so emotional, (laughs) but it's it's like, because, and that's why I dedicated it to all the survivors of this person, because we do have this thing in common that no one else can understand, even though each of our individual experiences are different, it still links us in a way. Oh, absolutely. Um, Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I, unfortunately, I think, you know, what you go through and sort of that, that, um, thing you're trying to break through happens to a lot of people in this world. Mm -hmm. Um, and they, they tend to live alone with it and asking for help, like you said, can be so hard. And, you know, it, if if you listen to the interview, it's uh, a lot of detail and, um, it is amazing that you survived and it, it was a horrific event, but let me ask you, is there, of all the things that happened to you that were terrible, what is there anything that was good? Is there anything from this event that you extracted that you could be like, I don't, I, it's, it's here's where I feel delicate. Like, how do I say, like, how do you right. extract something good for something unresolved, horrific, and, and obviously not, there was no cause that you had uh, to incite um, it? Yeah, I do remember being in the hospital shortly after this happened and people kind of worrying that I wouldn't dance again, you know, are you going to da- be able to dance? I'm like, of course, like, mm-hmm. what are you talking about? And I just, I mean, I just, again, like sometimes that got like, you know, I was not as sure, but mm-hmm. I always went back to like that initial feeling of like, I chose to survive this. I chose to live through this. Mm-hmm. I chose to, you know, fight and I chose to survive and I'm going to make something of myself, even if it's just, you know, I know like I'm not curing cancer, right. But it's yeah. still something that's meaningful. And, um, and I always hoped that I could help others through this process. So if anything, I think that's, what's good is, is, is being willing to do the work and hopefully helping other people to find the strength and bravery, because I think we all have it. Um, and, also knowing that I can stand up for myself. Again, I'm a very non-confrontational person by nature. Me too. But I still am so <laughs> strong. And mm. that's always stayed with me too. It's like, and it, I even get annoyed with myself when I do sweat the small stuff. I'm like, God, I've lived through this. Like, why am I so worried about this? You know, and sometimes it's almost a reminder, like, get over it, Lynn. Like, mm. my God, you've literally faced death and right. said, not today. You know, uh-huh. so. <laughs> yeah, you are um, a survivor. Say, <laughs> but yeah, it's remarkable, the whole story. Yes. And I, I, I think I had, I had a Garfield phone. Um, really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <I know. laughs> well, yeah, um, your, your mom my, loved cats. My mom too. loved cats. Yes. Yeah. And I can almost see on the cover of the book, a Garfield phone with some blood on it, you know, like, or the movie, <laughs> like that would be a very yeah, powerful, the movie poster. intriguing right? moment. Yeah, but yeah. um, thank you so much for telling the story. And I know you're helping people and, you know, it's kind of directly in, in brand with the only one in the room, right? When mm-hmm. you get to tell your story, you give people the strength to not feel isolated and alone or a victim yeah, yeah. Um, of the world. And um, yeah, we're, we're going to um, th- thank you again for coming on the show. And uh, thank you yeah. for having me so much. Yeah, we appreciate you.